Hello, I am Frederick Lemieux coming to you from the LG Digital Studio at Georgetown University School of Continuing Studies. In focus today, Europol. I'm joined by Will Van Gemmert, the Deputy Executive Director in the Operations Department at Europol. Welcome, Will. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, my, first question, my first question will be, since its inception, what are the signature achievements of Europol in terms of intelligence sharing? Well, probably it's best to give you some figures on, on the development that we made. I think uh, Europol is now a fully-fledged uh, support organization for law enforcement in the European Union. You know, just to give you an example, last year we had something like 35,000 cases that we were involved in. Out of them, 1,500 uh, high-profile cases uh, and also something like 61 JITs. That's on the operational part, but also on the information exchange, uh, we had more than uh, 1 million messages sent around all uh, of our partners. So quite a lot of uh, activity in sharing information. Could you explain what joint investigative teams are and how this structure has changed Europol role into the uh, European Union? Well, joint investigation teams is, is, a, is a framework that has been existing because of the European Union. They agreed to have something like this. It means that we have a, a cooperation in which uh, not only Europol but also Eurojust could be part of. Uh, together with member state investigative services and the framework gives you a guarantee on how you could engage with each other. Also how you can use evidence coming from one case towards the other uh, and also how it's possible uh, to have even uh, investigators of another country working with you in your country. So it's making the exchange of information and judicial procedures a lot easier. Uh, we do a lot of them, 61 last year, but it's only one of the things that we're doing. Uh, because that's in the judicial frame. Mm -hmm. Investigative support has also been given uh, before you get into the judicial uh, phase of an investigation. And, well, as I said, we had something like 1,500 of them uh, cooperating with, with all member states. Uh, as it goes for JITS, also it, it had uh, a, a certain start. Uh, but now every member state in the European Union, all tw 28 of them are involved in this and, and, and working along this profile, and it gives a lot of let's say, more easy cooperation than we had in the past. Okay. Um, another question, how are Europol responding to cyber threat right now? Well, cyber has been more or less the game changer for Europol. I think uh, when we started five years ago with the European Cyber Crime Center, uh, it was acknowledged that if you do a cyber investigation, you always get into international cooperation because that's, that's more or less uh, a default position you have in there. Um, we try to, well, perform and act as a platform for member states to work with us on cyber cases. So what we are delivering now is the possibility to bring your cyber case to towards Europol, have a, instead of a, a, a multi, uh, uh, let's say a one look from one national perspective into a case, into a multilateral perspective. And that means that we have all kinds of, of cooperative activities in which we can bring cases to a higher level of cooperation with member states. Um, and that's really paying off. And we had a lot of examples in which we were able to bring different member states together, have a combined actions, and uh, really work on uh, better results on the cyber field. Hmm. Okay. Well, um, to conclude, maybe a last question. What current and emerging challenges Europol is facing in addressing transnational threats? Well, I could mention a lot of things, to be honest, but let's start at least with the, the criminal perspective in this. There is. Um, we produce every uh, four years a report on the development of crime in Europe, and we see that we had something like uh, 5,000 organized crime groups in the European Union uh, being uh, detected, more or less. Mm -hmm. So that's the first, uh, um, I think, challenge that we have, the amount of. The second one is into how they operate. Uh, one of the uh, biggest, I think, changes that we see is that there's something uh, what we call crime as a service. You can order your crime by an organization that will support you in this field, especially on the cyber field and also on other fields. Mm -hmm. uh, and how to react towards this, that's, that's a challenge. But there are also other challenges coming from, uh, let's say, the, uh, the more uh, framework in which we are. Um, uh, retention, uh, the possibility to get the information is uh, something. Encryption that's being used. Mm -hmm. But I'm not so only, well, focusing on, let's say, negative issues. There are also possibilities. I think if you look in the cyber field, the data that we can collect now as law enforcement is very increasing. Uh, and especially also in the uh, upcoming travel intelligence, travel information that's available. These are things that we are working on to make sure that we use this very rich databases 
in order to help us with uh, combating organized crime. Mm -hmm. So the challenges are diverse, um, giving us difficulties like the equipment part, but giving also new opportunities of working together. And I think the most important thing for Europol is that we act as a platform, uh, giving the possibility to work with each other uh, and also to reach out towards private companies in that field. So a lot of challenges, but yeah. that makes it also very interesting. I and think. opportunities as yes. well. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Well, thank you very much, Will, for your insights. Um, it's been a pleasure talking with you, and, um, and thank you to everyone out there for watching. Stay tuned for more from the LG Digital Studio at Georgetown SCS.